Hey guys, I've got something cool to show you today. This is the Minis Forum EM780. Uh, this thing has some pretty impressive specs. Um, uh, we have, this is the EM780. This is a Ryzen 7 8740U, and it has Radeon 780 graphics. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel mode, has a terabyte of storage, and we're gonna open this bad boy up. Now, full disclosure, Minis Forum sent me this to review, and uh, holy crap, this thing is small, dude. Now, I, I did actually open this up earlier. It came in a little plastic bag, um, but I haven't powered this on, uh, and I haven't done anything else with it, so... Uh, my god, this is incredibly small. Like, holy crap, wait a minute. Dude, I mean, that's an ESP32. That's a PSP, my guys. Like, this thing is absolutely tiny. Like, my god. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got, this is, this is an original Zune, 30 gigabytes. We have a Retroflag GPi2 case. And, uh, that's a compute module. Dude, like, this thing is insanely small, guys. Original Zune. Haven't used that in a while. <laughs> I cannot believe how small this is. So we have a little bit of documentation here. Uh, getting set up with your PC, blah, blah, blah. We know how all this works. Uh, let's just look at the box. So what else do we have in here? Oh, there it is. All right, we have cardboard. So we have a uh, HDMI cable. We have a USB type C power adapter. What is this rated for? 20 volts, 3.25 amps. Maximum power is 65 watts. That's, I like this texture on it. That's pretty nice. Got like this almost, it feel, it's not, but it has like almost a 3D printer quality to it. Um, I like that. And we have a USB type C cable. And we have, what is this? USB-C docking station. Oh, cool, it comes with a dock. Why would it come with a dock? That's weird. So let's look at the I.O. on this thing. Uh, we have a USB 4. We have a combo headphone and um, headphone and microphone jack. We have a power button, a CMOS clear button, what looks like an LED light. We have a Kensington lock. We have uh, an SD card slot. A micro SD card slot. We have a uh, super speed USB. That looks like a CMOS clear spot, so I'm not sure what that is because that has the little weird reset icon that they tend to use. Then we have a HDMI. We have a USB. This looks like uh, Gen 2 or Gen 3 by 2 or whatever, and that also does. And that does too. Now, if you don't know how to tell, it's probably impossible to see on, on the camera here. So along the inside, there are uh, there are metal contacts, but right here, along the, f the flat edge, the facing edge, there are contacts. That's how you can tell if it's just, if it's three versus 3.2 or whatever, um, it's got extra contacts in there. And we also have a USB four slot. We have, wait a minute, where's the power? There's no power input on this? Wait, wait a minute, what? Are we, do we plug into this for power? Dude. Whoa, that's cool. I love that. So this plugs in here, right? And then power goes in there and we can HD, uh, we can uh, ethernet that shit. Okay, that's kind of blowing my mind. I'm curious if a Thunderbolt 3 would work on this. Uh, I'm kind of doubting it, but it would it would be awesome, right? I mean, that would be really, really cool. Because uh, I have a Thunderbolt 3 dock, so I don't know if USB 4 and Thunderbolt 3 are cross-compatible, but whatever. We could, we'll just use this to start. So we're gonna, um, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna do this. 
I'll plug this bad boy into my capture card right here. And it's probably gonna come with windows on it, but we'll fix that in short order. I'll plug this guy in. And let's just see about this. I mean, dude, guys, I have to say, this little tiny PC here is just crazy. I, this feels pocketable. <laughs> like, I mean, you don't want to pocket this, but it seems pocketable. You know what I'm saying? Like you could plug this in to a battery pack and you could take this with you um, wherever. Ooh, little tiny fan. I just heard it go wee. <laughs> uh, I should switch over to capturing. There we go. Minis forum. And I'm seeing it on my screen over here. I only have keyboard input at the moment. I don't know why I'm setting up windows. I'm literally going to delete this. You know what's, you know what's hilarious about this is like, I spent probably 10 minutes almost setting up windows. If I, I already have a uh, USB drive flash with Chimera OS, and it's like, if I had just plugged that in and started that process at the same time I did this, I'd be done by now. I'd be at game mode already. <laughs> Microsoft, you need to get your act together. You suck so hard. <laughs> I literally cannot believe how slow a process and, and you know, if, and this isn't even installing windows, right? Like this is, this is getting uh, it set up for you after the installation process. So now we're at the desktop. I've got the mouse set up, um, but we still need, what is all this crap down here? What is this? A search bar? I don't have a search bar. I think I might've disabled it. What is this icon? Oh, Copilot? Gross. I don't want that shit in my operating system. Chat. Hide. Ryzen set. Well, we have 32 gigabytes of RAM in this. What? The box says 30, 16 gigabytes X2, my guys. That's 32 gigs. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got. Cool. We have Windows 11 Home, which is trash. Um, I am going to set up Steam on here, I guess, because I'm going to need to benchmark. I really appreciate how Valve has simplified the login process because I have a bajillion computers and I install Steam on all of them all the time. Logging in on one will log out on another. Let's just do this. Why not? All right, while we wait for that to finish installing, I want to tell you about something really cool that I've, I'm doing recently. It's called subscribe to dot me. And it's uh, a website where I'm hosting all of my videos going forward. Not only am I hosting there, but all of my videos are being released at, uh, at least a day early, but most of the time they're being released like a week, maybe two weeks in advance. Videos like this have been up for a week, a week and a half uh, over there. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you could have seen this two weeks ago uh, on subscribe to me. Subscribe to me is cool because it lets me kind of decouple myself from the YouTube algorithm. Uh, so if you've found that uh, you're not seeing these videos, uh, you're not being notified about these videos on YouTube, well, you can head over to subscribe to me and follow me there where all of my videos are not surrounded by a bunch of crap. It's my videos. Additionally, you can subscribe using an RSS reader, a podcast app, because most of my videos actually have an audio only version exclusively over there. and. Best of all, you can use any Fediverse account. If you have a Mastodon account, if you have a PeerTube account, uh, if you're on PixelFed, you can you can subscribe to my channel over there using those accounts. And you don't have to set up a new account or do anything extra special to uh, get in on over there. You can even like, share, and comment on my videos over there using your existing accounts on Mastodon, PixelFed or PeerTube. Uh, I'm very pleased with how this is turning out. We've seen some strong growth over there and I've even connected subscribe to me with a couple other cool uh, techie Linux YouTubers. So 
uh, if you want to see some of their cool stuff, you can over there as well. With that being said, it is no small feat in terms of cost to run my own streaming service. So uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to my patrons. It's because of them that I've been able to do this. So if you like the idea of a non-YouTube way of watching my videos and you want to help support that effort, you can check out my Patreon. There's a link below. Anyway, this looks like it's about done. So let's switch back over and try Doom Eternal. Well, let's just use mouse and keyboard, I guess, even though it's the worst thing ever. And let's check our video settings. So we're running at 1760 by 900. Um, adaptive, no HDR, uh, no ray tracing, obviously. And what are we doing for performance metrics? Let's do medium performance metrics, and then we're going to apply the changes. Running at somewhere between 60, 50 and 60 frames a second. Yeah, I do not play this with a mouse and keyboard, but it seems to be working. It's like actually very playable. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Um, this is Doom Eternal after all. And I mean, it feels pretty good. It's it seems like it's really alternating between like 58 and 62 frames a second. Um, I'm curious if we like engage like a frame cap if we say on oh yeah nice so 60 fps like rock solid 60 fps which makes me think that we might be able to bring a lot of these settings up here so let's do 1080p now i'm actually running this on a 4k display but because i have a capture card uh in the mix it's reporting as 1920 by 1080 maximum um, let's see, performance metrics, render mode, overall quality. Let's set everything to medium and see how that works and we'll apply those changes. Okay, we, we've halved our performance. <laughs> let's take the resolution back and see how that fares. So let's set it to 1080p. And let's go down here to low. Texture pool size, shadow quality, reflection quality, light quality, particle quality, decal quality. See, I don't know what any of these, how these impact performance, but I mean, that doesn't look bad to me. Like you can definitely see uh, some low detail in the textures, but like, it's really not that bad. Oh, I'm on fire. So, I mean, this this all works. This is... I'm pretty impressed by, by this little device. I mean, like, this little dude on my desk here is powering this. And I can't even hear it. Like, it's not making a freaking peep. Now, I don't know about playing games at 4K. I'm gonna guess that's a non-starter on this. Um, at least a, a big AAA game like Doom Eternal. Um, but playing games at 4K, like a Spelunky or, or like a Dead Cells, probably something like that, like a low, <clears throat> a low demand game, I'm imagining is going to work pretty well. But the question is, how do older AAA games work? because I have another, I've got one of my favorite games ever, Bioshock Infinite installed on here. And we're gonna try that. Now, I'm, I'm playing this on Windows as well, so. Uh, I'm curious to see how the game is gonna perform on SteamOS, or Chimera, I should say. Um, actually, let's, let's go here, and let's go back to disable vertical sync. Let's actually turn it off and just see where it maxes out. Oh my god, 126 frames a second, guys.
BFG. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> okay. Get out of here. So we've we've got our benchmark here, about 125, 130 frames a second. Um, all right, let's go to our options. We're going to go to our graphics. All right, we got everything. We got very high. Um, that's not bad. 1920 by 1080. I mean, this is not like a demanding game by modern standards, so. Uh, it didn't work on the Intel powered SEI 10 that we tried uh, a couple days ago. But uh, we're gonna try this. See, I, I'm more of an older school kind of gamer. I prefer games that are like 10 years old, 12 years old. <laughs> like, I'm not really. Uh, I mean, that's a convincing uh, reflection of Hank Hill as Ben Franklin. <laughs> uh, I look like a jackass. Uh, we need to see our um, frame right here. So let's go into the settings. And we're going to go into... They've changed this. I usually play in game mode, in Steam Deck mode. Top left. All right, we're at 60. Let's turn off V-Sync so we see how high this goes here. V-Sync. No locked frame rate. Enter to save changes. 88 frames a second. I mean, guys. This, this is pretty impressive for a little tiny computer come on how cool is this there is definitely some stuttering though like that definitely picking up on some stuttering so that's that's pretty cool that's nice i like that but uh let's actually install a real operating system on it oh i hate everything about windows 11. we're gonna restart this bad boy Oh wow. Let's let's go into the setup and just see what we got here. Dude, why does this BIOS look like Windows 8? <laughs> it's like it's got this stupid menu over here. Uh, I don't know, dude. All right. Let's go back. Exit without saving. We're going to go over here to boot options and we're going to choose Lexar. We're going to erase Windows, because Windows is trash. T-R-A-S-H. There we go. Install Chimera OS. Yes. Boom shakalaka. All right. Now, hopefully, I don't have to run an Ethernet cable out here. Hopefully, it detects my Wi-Fi card. Configure. Yes, it does. Hey. All right. Yep. Yes. Delete it all. Delete everything. Windows is garbage. Let's check out the advanced options. Use firmware overrides, unstable builds. Yeah, I don't care. Just go with the default. Boom, we're installing Chimera OS 45, my guys. Uh, really excited about this one, actually. This is gonna be cool. And just so you're keeping track, I hope you're like paying attention because we're almost done setting up, <laughs> setting up our operating system because it's gonna go here and then we're going to boot into right into big picture mode and then we're going to sign in and we're done there's no faffing about with windows 11 startup like configurations and disabling privacy uh invading features and you know uh, clicking next and then skipping out of a free office 365 and uh, and getting one month free of xbox game pass and all this crap 
How about you just offer a good product? And you know what's like the craziest thing about all of this to me is like, this is an incredibly fast installation, uh, but Chimera OS is actually one of the slower Linux installations. It depends entirely on your uh, um, internet speed. Would you like to restart your computer now? Yes. And that took installing an actual operating system took less time than it's than it takes to like get through the tedious Windows 11 first run startup bullshit. It's insane to me. I cannot believe it. And it detected the uh, native resolution of my display too, versus Windows, which couldn't see the actual display. Oh yeah. There we go. Look at that. All right, first run setup. We're gonna pick uh, Eastern Standard Time. We're already set up with our Wi-Fi because that's how the freaking setup works, my dudes. Oh, it's so good. And then, and then we sign in here. Look, easy, easy. This is this is how life should be, my guys. But instead, we're subjected to Microsoft's, like, evil nonsense. And then we're gonna go over here, go to settings. It's fully navigable with just a keyboard, which is great. Cool. So now, let's, we have to, oh no, we don't. We don't have to reinstall it. <laughs> because there's a TF card reader on this thing. And I can just go like this and take the SD card out of my Steam Deck, and I can plug it right in here. Look at this. It's almost like this was meant to run Steam OS. And we go to installed. Look at this, we have all these installed games, including Bioshock Infinite, so I don't have to download it again. All right, we're gonna go here to Doom Eternal. Yeah. Oh, we have an update? I'm just gonna play it. Downloading content. Guys, how, I don't understand how, like, I, I get it. Like, there's so much propaganda and like, just lies. But like, I just don't get how anybody could think Windows is better. Like, yeah, you can play like terrible online shooters that are only fun because you're playing them with your friends. Right? Like, I get that. If you think it's fun to play video games online, then I, I guess I understand. But, like, everything else is, like, so much better on Linux. I just, I lit, it boggles my mind. Like, things just work on Linux, unlike on Windows, where you have to trick your operating system into doing what you want it to do. It, it it actually boggles my mind. I, I don't understand why anyone would think it's a better choice. All right, let's check our settings. Maybe that guy. Oh, that's not it. That's it. Um, our settings are gonna be 1280 by 800. Let's, let's set it to this. Okay, it defaults to native. That's good. Vertical sync is off. Render mode, performance metrics, medium. We have low settings. Let's apply this and go back. We need to go in here and we need to go here. We need to go here. We need to allow tearing. No, we need to do off and a lot of tearing. All right, mission select. Doom Hunter base, 140 FPS. All right, so 97 with all the same settings set the same way. And there, there is like a decidedly more, a softer quality to this image. Um, I 
I'm wondering. It says we're at nine. I think it might have to do with the Let's go to scaling FSR. Oh, that looks a lot better. But I think this actually has FSR or something in it. Uh... No, there's DLF. Okay, that's fine. This this looks so much better when you turn on the FSR. Like it was kind of a soft image, and still, like we've got at least parity with Windows here, if not a slight improvement. I mean, we're playing the same level. Uh, granted, you know, I can't perfectly replicate my uh, inputs, but I mean, generally speaking, this this is a very impressive little device. I mean, this is like Steam Deck quality, but like at 1080p. Like, I don't think the Steam Deck could manage a hundred and something frames a second at 1080p. Like, this is pretty nice. And, you know, for a device like this, like, you know, I've I've gone on the record many times saying if it's not 720p, it's not for me. But that's, you know, on a power limited handheld, like, it doesn't make any sense to have a, uh, a handheld device that's battery limited and power throttled with a 1080p screen on it. It doesn't even make sense for your phone, like, let alone for, like, you know, uh, a p handheld gaming PC where your PC, you know, a higher frame rate, yes, absolutely. You always want to have a higher frame rate. But like, if you're running a, a, a PC in your, you know, it's meant to be run on battery, well, guess what? You don't want 720p. You, you want 720p, you don't want 1080p or higher even. That would be insane. So my whole philosophy is regarding like, um, dude, I am getting slaughtered. No, I'm not. Dude, I'm, I must be playing on easy. Anyway, let's go try Bioshock Infinite now, shall we? For comparison. It's wild to me that the 2K launcher has Booker DeWitt as one of the four main characters because Frankly, this game is very old <laughs> and I mean they're bank and they have a big daddy on there, too and It's like dude. How about you guys do something? Right, let's go to option Graphics 1920 very high, okay Locked frame rate off it seems to remember all of my settings from the other thing that's I like it when it does that sometimes <laughs> All right, let's uh, continue. I should have hit new game, but whatever. That work. All right, what are we at? Seventy-five FPS. So this is actually running worse than Windows, if I remember correctly. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's about right. I don't know. We'll see when we compare the footage. 85, 82. Eh, I think it's about 10 FPS slower if I remember correctly. Dude, Bioshock is such, this is such a beautiful game, dude. Yeah, I think this is going a little bit slower. So this looks and plays really great on here. I mean, we're at like 90 almost FPS. And the Steam, uh, this little guy, the EM780 is awesome. Uh, now I'm gonna push the power button here and see how it sleeps. Okay, it is asleep. Now if I hit the power button again, resume. 
Wow, look at that. Now, I'm gonna have to connect my controller again. There we go, connected, boom. But, now the question is, can I wake it up from sleep with the controller? I'm gonna guess no. Holy crap! Oh no, it didn't do it. <laughs> the light is blinking because it's asleep. Okay, that's all right. But I mean, dude, it, it resumes immediately and I'm already back in. I actually really like this uh, device here. The, the EM780. I want to thank Minisform for sending me this to review. I have another one that I'm going to review. Uh, it's the this guy's big brother, and I'm kind of really stoked to play with that one. So uh, we'll talk about that one in another video. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.